if you put that into inspiring action, it's like it's really cool. Like we we did this message with uh, it's a ten minute message with an indigenous elder from from Colombia, and he talked about some stuff about the root of the climate crisis and some kind of hidden roots that they believe. And it's like with that we could be able to plant thousands of trees. So it's like wow, it, it was really amazing. Like we put some video, then the people get touched, then the people donate, then we could plant the trees. And so it's like it's it's kind of it's inspiring, but it's like he's giving the option to take action too. So that that's a lot of of what I believe that with art is really incredible. Not just to give you the feeling like okay, I need to change something, but let's change it together like we could do go beyond and do something more and welcome to another installment of behind greatness by inspire uh, it's luciano here uh, as your host uh, as per usual um also as per usual i want to remind the listener to please uh, take the time to rate us uh, and also share uh, share with your family and friends this is what we like this is what we would like to ask you to do and i'll continue to ask you to do that because this is uh, this is how we're growing and this is how we're um spreading our message um and uh, this is how we're uh, able to meet um, fascinating people fascinating new people from around the world and have conversations um much like the one we're going to have today if uh if you also feel inclined uh, to visit our website and see our uh our catalog of uh, of conversations past conversations um if you feel inclined to do that uh have a check over to donations as well as we are a registered charity and issue tax receipts for anybody who wishes to donate to to our cause today Today we have a, a, a guest from uh Vienna who lives in Vienna um half the year and in Colombia the other half the year. His name is Santiago Roa Duque. He is a creative director working in various types of art like film, photography and music. He is the founder and director of the Jaguar Siembra project. Uh, I should say Jaguar, is that right? Better than Jaguar. 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 Yeah, I missed it. <laughs> So, Jaguar Siemba project, um, creating food forests and working on environmental, social, and cultural topics. He is currently directing a transmedia film called Corazón del Mundo, his first documentary alongside a reforestation project with the indigenous people in the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, Colombia. He was born and raised in Colombia, and as I mentioned before, based in Vienna. Welcome to the show, Santiago. Thank you very much for having me here and for the invitation. Like, it's really great. And thank you for the introduction. It, it was like really nice too. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. No, the, uh, the pleasure is ours. Um, and before we get started, I want to I want to thank the person who put us together. Her name is Marisha Mir, um, uh, Mirnowska. Uh, and she was actually on, uh, she was a guest on our podcast on episode 84. And she spoke very highly of you, put us together nice. I don't know, many months ago. I don't know, January. It was like six, seven months ago. Uh, but we're finally here. We're finally here. Cool. And it, before, uh, before we get started, actually, I, this is part of getting started. What I'm, I'm going to ask you, um, because you had mentioned something right before we were recording, that um, a project that you were working on uh, or are working on currently with Marisha, uh, which I, I found pretty interesting. You want to share that? Yeah, like, um, like we, like she's awesome. I don't know. We connect with her, and then we found that she's like really into plants, and yeah, like trying to preserve all the wisdom of the plants and um, yeah, how to use them. That is something that yeah, of course, like we have been lost a lot, um, and we are doing kind of the same, like trying to get in. in getting back again in touch with nature through the indigenous communities that they have been like having that intrinsical relationship and deep, deep relationship with nature, like really, really, really uh, preserve it. Um, and they could share a lot of stuff for us that we, we could learn. So um, uh, we are working into doing that in Colombia. And then the idea is to kind of create like a cultural center and create a place that we could, I don't know, build more bridges, like work together with different cultures 
um, and then like do all of all of that stuff that, for example, Marisa is doing it with the plants. Like we could do it there, and we could learn from the indigenous there, and we could make like workshops and gatherings and groups and community. Um, so that's the idea. It's an, an indigenous owned land, so it's like uh, the project is really nice because we are starting to build like the traditional houses. Um, and at the same time, we are planting trees in an, in that farm for a while. So it's like, we already have a food forest there, a cacao food forest growing there. So it's like an example that people can go and experience what is what we are doing in the work. And then maybe we will have the space to, I don't know, like have an editing room that we could edit in the films with the community and working in the films like we are working with them in, in the films together but then having that space is really really needed so let me let me ask you uh and, and that's something we didn't uh, I, I didn't mention at the beginning is your website is uh jaguar jaguar siembra.com right yeah exactly and we'll put the spelling in the show notes for sure uh, so uh you educated me a, a little bit the last time we a lot actually the last time we spoke about indigenous cultures in colombia uh, and you know, kind of in looser terms, and uh, in Latin America, or at least in South America. Um, what is La Linea Negra? Yeah, like La Linea Negra is like it's like this delimitation. Like imagine that there is this mountain, right? That there is this mountain that is like it is with the snow and is by the ocean too. So it's the most biggest uh, mountain of Colombia, actually. Uh, and most biggest coastal mountain in the world. So it has all the thermal floors and it goes by the ocean into the snow peaks and it's a really big, it's like, it's, it's a sierra. And then it's like, there is like this belt that is kind of grab at that center. And there is a micro system there that is proven that everything that happens there has a repercussion in the health of the planet, like many other places too, like the Amazon, like everything that we do in one place has a repercussion to the other one. And that's something that is kind of hard for us to figure out. Like it's kind of, we don't, we, we know it, but it's like, it's really hard for us like to really, really understand it. Um, so there is these communities there that they have been living thousands of years there. Um, and they have been like really good to preserve it after the conquest. They went up into the mountains, so they have been preserved even the last 500 years. And they are in super deep touch with nature and like in magical and beautiful ways. So they call themselves the Elder Brothers and they call this black line like a, an interconnection sacred sites that maintains the balance between humans and nature some way. So they have something that is called payment. And the payment is like, the payment is like a, the reciprocity that we have with the natural forces, kind of. Mm -hmm. So it's like for the air that we breathe, for the water that we consume, for the food, like we should pay, actually. There is forms to do that, but we have been lost that. Um, uh, and they say that, yeah, that has been damaged our relationship with nature. And we have been forgotten so many things. And with food, like we have this connection with food. We don't know the food that we are eating. And that creates, like food creates kind of thoughts. And then we don't have so many good thoughts. Uh, and then it's like, <laughs> then we start to have more problems and problems because we are not functioning good, kind of in the base. I've never heard this before. Uh, I had to write it down. <laughs> food creates thoughts. Yeah. Can a healthy food create healthy thoughts in a way? Let's stay on this. Um, uh, in my everyday business, uh, uh, I'm in the food business, companies in the mm -hmm. food business. So uh, this is something that um, uh, that's close to my, it's close to my thoughts. So let, let's explore a bit. Um, but I think I think for the listener, it might make sense to know a little bit about your background. Um, mm -hmm. Because you mentioned uh, 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 how disconnected you were from food um uh, growing up um you uh so you grew up in bogota uh, this was capital yeah. city colombia your mom was a teacher uh, but also an artist a singer a musician and uh your dad was a dentist uh, so that's how you introduced your family and then you have a couple of siblings but then you you spend a long time telling me about your experiences in the country because your family your grandfather had a farm out in the country mm -hmm. And that's when you started to mention how disconnected you felt from food, from nature living in the city. 
Yeah, I think like it's, it's, it's something natural. I think like in the last generations, I think like we have been more like kind of losing that more and the cities start to develop and then the people from the countryside went into the cities and that's something that has been happening like the last 60 years or something like that. But then it's like, yeah, like I'm from the 90s and it's this relationship into growing like with a lot of technology arriving, internet, like a lot of devices that people didn't have it before and they grew up like more into let's go to the forest let's go to the river like we still live that but like we were losing it already like um and then for me going into the countryside always was like wow this is really cool i feel like really natural here like i it's like it's this is that way no you feel that in the natural way this is why we love to go to the ocean because it's it's natural for us to be there so um and then like maybe yeah like the question with food arrive like more and more and more and more later but always we we have that no it's like you are starting to choose what you want to eat like what do you like and then you realize like if you go to a farm and then you know like we have this abundance of fruits and stuff in colombia so it's like we grew up with like trying different fruits different flavors it's like there is always abundance of something um and then yeah like arriving here in europe and then like going into the supermarket and then going to find that abundance and it's like it's, it's not there and if it's there has been traveling a lot mm. and then it's like probably really 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 expensive and doesn't taste the same and then you start to realize like yeah what is the food from here and there is there is but like we are not eating too much things actually like our diets has become like kind of pretty tight and there is a lot of things to eat so i wanted to ask you uh about why jaguar uh, and you gave me a story about um I, I, it was in your 20s i believe uh or early 20s that you visited guatemala and you you lived you lived two months as you were trying to figure figure things out for yourself. Um, uh, you lived two months in the jungle. Yeah. What happened there? There was a story there that you told me about. Yeah, like it, it was like kind of the beginning of the project that I was realizing that I really want to do something with, um, like I'm a filmmaker, like I've been involved with, with like with arts, like uh, with photography and music and like any arts, like I really, I'm, I'm really wanted to be involved in arts. Like, so films like kind of like the summatory of a lot of art. So it's like, it's really cool. Um, and then I was like, yeah, making a film is really difficult, but, but then it's like, you end up like working some commercial stuff and, um, and then it's like, you take the wrong way maybe because it's like the only way to get funding. And as any art right now, it's like, it could be whatever. Um, but my idea was like, wow, I, I, I really believe that films can touch people and can really make so much of what right now we are using it. Like we have, like, we are in, living in a time that the image is kind of, we live in a democratization of the image. So everyone can make image and everyone can be a filmmaker. And it's like, we are uh, oversaturated actually by images, but the quality is, is, too, is too much quantity and not too much quality. Um, so that, that happens a lot with the, with the commercial film era that we are living and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I don't know. I found that the documentaries have been always like inspiring humanity and telling really deep stories in really nice ways. So, um, I wanted to do that. And then I was there in, in Guatemala in this jungle, learning about some ancient cultures from the Maya. And I was realizing like, wow, we have in Colombia so many indigenous tribes that are still there and that I could access them. And actually we have these pyramid sites too that I need to go there. And then the jaguar is this animal that is like, it's really sacred and so hold that in America. So there it was like kind of mama jaguar walking with us in the jungle, we never saw it, but she was there like in the, the pause was there always. Uh, and then in the Sierra is like Kogis means kind of Jaguar and they like, they have this connection with the Jaguar too. So 
if there is no jaguars, like there is no healthy jungles because he is like yeah, he's like he's the umbrella species. Like he regulates that there is not too much abundance of deers because deers eat the new trees, so there's there is a disbalance, and then it's like the whole ecosystem needs to eat itself, kinda to be in balance. Um, so if there is no jaguars, like there is no healthy forest. And the shamans and the spiritual leaders have always have that connection with that animal, like really, really powerful. Like in ayahuasca and different cultures, it's like it's an animal that is like really respected. So I don't know, I started to kind of follow in the steps of like the places that the jaguar was visiting and then I go into these communities talking with these um, elders. And they start to share in some stories. So I was like, yeah, really cool. Let's put this into a film. Let's share it. And then people was like, oh, I saw that message. I saw that film and I really want to contribute to do something. So I, I'm going to donate to planting trees or to that you keep doing these films and keep transmitting that. Um, so we started with the idea that that's okay. It's great. Let, let's, let, this is a transmedia project that we could take, like make a lot of films, a lot of messages, like uh, using art kind of as an um, inspiring tool to drive action into climate ju justice stuff. So uh, I want to interrupt there because I don't want to miss uh, another point because when you were traveling in those places and you were discovering what you could do, um, the messages that you could put together um, with the art form, uh, with filmmaking, you also said to me that when you were visiting the pyramid sites in Guatemala, in that time, you're traveling to these places. You said that there are places made of sound. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Well, I don't know. Like in the, in all of the pyramid sites, like sound is really really important. It's like if it's it, it if it it comes to say if it is like the places are made by sound. Like the, the sound dynamics there are really really special and really key. For example, the acoustics are really like kind of kind of if the people that build that they knew about it it's not a coincidence because it is in it's in Egypt it's in Mexico mm. it's in Colombia it's in Peru so um kind of sound has a really important uh relationship with the stones and the stones that are made by that they last in time mm. so I think like, yeah, like this is one of the, th the key things, for example, that they say that they learn to hear and they could train to the ear to hear more about nature, how the wind sounds with the trees and uh, they are like more aware into this kind of developing more the senses. And then it's like, if it's like, if we walk barefoot, we have this connection with the earth because actually we are touching the energy field of the earth and we feel really awesome. And then choose like take that connection. So for them, it's like, it's really key that you in the important moments, you take your shoes out and you feel the earth because like, okay, you are going to get grounded. This is what, this is, this is the word actually. It's like you get, you get grounded with that energy. I think like all of these things sounds like, wow, it's really, I don't know. Like we have been hearing a lot, but then when you experience it by yourself and it's like, you are more connected into that, you start to realizing that it's beautiful and it's real. Yeah. I feel more connected, but I'm very full, like walking into the jungle. Like, it's like, it's really different. So uh, we talked about this with Marisha as well. And she said that uh, one of the problems with modern, with modern human beings is that we wear tennis shoes and we walk on concrete. So there are two levels mm -hmm. of disconnect from the earth. But when you say connection, I get it. I get it when you say we're connected to the earth, connected to the, to nature, but what is the meaning of that connection? Like, so what? So right now I can take off my shoes, go walk, uh, go walk in the backyard in the dirt. So what, 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 what does that mean for me? uh yeah but it depends like maybe it's like um i think like right now we have an epidemic of like like we don't know how to handle our emotions right so it's like we are living in a society that is like overwhelmed by emotions and stuff so because we are not living naturally so what that could do is like maybe you are super stressed and maybe you are like even angry so you say like what what is going to happen and maybe you are going to go there and you're going to relax that's it 
that suddenly that is going to happen and maybe you're going to find some peace and maybe you're going to enjoy the moment and you're going to breathe more uh but that's it it's not not major major like you're not going to discover like wow the aha moment of life like but you're going to enjoy more life and are going to be like more in tune with it so maybe even if in the difficult moments like when you are like that it's like you are kind of rock that feels like the ocean is taking you and it's touching you but you are not moving so it's like you are there um and that's really beautiful that happened like for example i don't know i've been in concert that in the sierra it's really nice because it's like you go up and then you go down so it's like you go up and then you go down and it's like you go to the mountain and then you climb the mountain and say like now what like now what like now, now need to go down again like two hours and then going up again there's this, this no end so thank you um because you remind me of how um that kind of, I mean, I asked that question, obviously, because I, I want to see how you respond to it. But it's also a typical question that we ask ourselves here. I, I, now I've been educated in the Northern Hemisphere, right? Not just in the Western world, but in the Northern Hemisphere, too. Because our mindset, and I'm including myself in this, our mindset is about finding a solution. So, okay, mm -hmm. all right, so I'll take off my shoes. Go, let's go back to the example. I'll take off my shoes uh, and walk in the dirt, and maybe I'll feel better. Well, mm -hmm. Your answer, your response is, well, you're not going to find a eureka moment. This is what you are implying by your answer to me is that it should be part of your life to feel and to be more grounded by being with the ground. It's, it's not about finding a solution. And, and I think that's where, I, I think that's where, um, where we find our stresses, or excuse me, why, why we're so stressed. It's because we, we can't find a way out. And so we look for a, a solution, the solution. And I, I'm, I am believing that that is, that is not the way, that is not the way to live because you, you'll, you'll always be disappointed. Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe what you're looking, there is this meme that is really, really famous. And it's like, it's like there is an indigenous guy in a beach, like laying down with a cocoa, just there. A coconut. Yeah, coconut. Yeah, yeah, for a listener who doesn't, yeah, go. Drink, drinking the coconut. And then there is like this super business executive guy like sitting next to him. And then the guy is saying like, uh, I'm going to work a lot. I'm going to work a lot, a lot, a lot. All of the upcoming years that I have to be able to sit back again here with you and enjoy to drinking that coconut. Like being pensioned and whatever. And the guy is like, why, why do you are like not enjoying it right now so it's like you could do the same like as me like maybe not overworking all of these years to go into sit and enjoy the coconut in the beach but it's like it's a powerful image that i i really believe that and and right now it's like it's more difficult because it's like we have this over pressure and that we need to do stuff that we need to be successful we need to be inspireful and uh, we need to do, we need to do, and we need to solve the problems of the world. Like, so we, we let's solve deforestation. Uh, let's solve, yeah, like migration and stuff. Uh, but then you realize like, this is, it's like, like a forest is burning and then you are like doing your part. And then it's part of you to inspire more people into doing it, but it's okay. Like we are doing it. And, and so you are doing this also in, uh, by your description as well, uh, by your definition, in one of the most dangerous places in the world to do it. And that means, uh, excuse me, one of the most, let's, let's, re let's read it here. One of the most dangerous places for defending the environment. Mm -hmm. um, unless you disagree with that prior statement, I feel like your, your pause here is one of uh, reflection. And <laughs> do, do, no, you still, no. do you still agree with that statement you made? Yeah, like it is like that. It's like Colombia has been like there is so many environmental uh, leaders that have been murdered. Like I don't consider myself actually like an environmental leader or something like that. But it's like what we are doing is in a it's it's in a territory that has a risk of conflict. Yeah. So it's like yeah, maybe it could be misinterpreted, and then. Like it's already happening with people like, and 
the gov like right now we have a new government that let's hope yeah. like it's like the hope for everything. The new president of Colombia is the first leftist president in a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but he, he was also a gorilla. He was a gorilla for uh, a while. Yeah, but in the first, first, first one that they were only intellectuals, so they never had cut the guns or stuff like that. Actually, ah, okay. He never, he never went like. And then this dissolved. And then a new guerrilla was born. That is the famous one. That is the bad one. Uh, but he was like part of one guerrilla intellectual movement. So it's like he's a really good guy. And he's like, it's not that he's like so left. It's like he's center because it's like we it's know moderate. that the left is not good too. Yeah. Uh, and there is so many examples of that. So it's like, no, actually, he's making a pact to unite the countries and both sides and like making peace, real peace, actually. So this is part of what I read, is that he's more of a centrist, yes, and that he had left his leanings uh, when he was younger. Uh, But with that aside, he was part of a movement um, uh, that was anti-right. And you also gave me a story as an example of what had been or has been and still is going on in the countryside with the conflict uh, between two specific parties. Um, just for the listener's sake, do you, do you mind recounting that story just to give a, an indication of some of the things that uh, farmers and um, and even indigenous folks uh, face every day? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he's, I think he's, I don't know, like, um, I would say that a super big percentage of families in Colombia have been touched by the conflict in one way and to another one. So yeah. there is so many stories, but it's like, of course, if you are in the countryside and then you are like divided because the country is like divided into guerrilla and paramilitars, it's like in some areas, it's like if you have a farm, then someday it's gonna appear the paramilitars and then they are gonna ask for something. And then maybe next week it's gonna appear like guerrillas and it's gonna ask for something too. And then they are gonna say like, ah, someone told me that you were like helping the paramilitars and then you are in the middle of the conflict and you say like, I don't, I'm not helping anyone. Like everyone is welcome here, but it's like it's, it's really crazy. Then you are in a position, and there is people that get trapped into that and they start to like sadly playing with both teams. And yeah, yeah it, it happens a lot. Like in the indigenous communities, they have been taking people to join into the forces. Like the guerrilla has been, um, yeah, the guerrilla been in in all of the areas that they were like kind of commanding, it was like super areas with a lot of natural resources. So they stopped the introduction of uh, companies, for example, like oil companies from Canada, they they want to go and they, they want to do exploration in some jungles in Colombia. And then the guerrilla was there, so they were afraid and they in the end they will not do it. But that companies were the ones that they were financing paramilitaries to take protection and then like okay we are gonna do this business here and then we are gonna finance the paramilitaries and then it's like then you are divided so it's like this is the reality of has been ha- happening like it's like um paramil- the paramilitary group grow because uh, it was funded actually by northern countries like mostly the states trying to like revoke uh como se dice communes <laughs> Uh, That's right. Uh, revoke uh, commitments. Is that what you said? Yeah, uh, communes, like like to finish communes, like the fight against communes, communism. Oh, uh, uh, communists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was like that fight, and then they found these another left, right paramilitaries that they don't think about nothing, and then they are like most of the bad things in the country happen by them. So. Yeah, you you mentioned northern countries. So you said ninety percent of ninety percent of emissions from northern countries um, affect. Uh, you see the effects of uh, these emissions uh, mostly in the southern hemisphere. So mm-hmm. the, the decisions, corporate decisions, are made in the north hemisphere, but folks are displaced mostly in the southern hemisphere. And so, mm-hmm. I'm, of course, you just described um, how that is manifested in in rural Colombia as well. You also did say something else to me. Uh, let, let's go back a little bit to one of your loves because y- you are an artist uh, and you were a musician uh, when you were younger. Um, <laughs> and uh, you said you were in a band and you were pretty successful 
Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Maybe your girlfriend now won't, won't like to hear this and we can edit it if she gets upset. But you yeah. said it was a it was a crazy world. You had like nine girlfriends, uh, but the music was I'm great. Part of the band. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, when you were playing music, of course. Yeah. Uh, but, but the industry was shitty. Um, but all you wanted to do was make music to move people. Mm -hmm. uh, and you wanted to create something beyond just what musicians uh, create with their music. And uh, then you said, you said something so simple that is kind of also a recurring theme here is you said, we all need to do more art. Mm -hmm. That Why? would be cool, no? It would be cool. Uh, Why? Why would it be cool? Yeah, because it's like, it's that. This is what I was telling. Like, I think like we have living in this epidemic of um, emotions and depressions and stuff like and problems in communication and whatever. And so many bad ideas that we are following, like and that ideas are kind of imposed too. So it's like it's restricting that it, it has a lot to do with restricting creativity and like shaping paths for people and then thinking that this is the only way that you need to think about it. this is life and then we have that perspectives that are shaped by the school by the governments by the people in power so uh, music has always been a way to like kind of like get your feelings out like move things inspire things like people get changed by a song like Oh, I don't know, like you saved my life because of that song. I was going to commit suicide. And then you read that into some comments of some people that hear some band and it's like, wow, this is really, really, really powerful. And I don't know, I, I, I believe that the politician could fill up like a stadium with people, but people are going to get bored to hear him. Uh, but uh, a band could fill up a stadium and it's going to be this energy and it's co-creating and the people are talking about ideas and society is evolving and it's like it's this moment of connection and like the human connection that is like it's really ancestral because it starts with a guy like praying drums into a fire and then the other people <laughs> kind of gather it's together true. Uh, and that's really awesome that i think like this is that that's really powerful and if we could do it more that would be more more happy place then so I'm making connections now again as as you say this because you said it, beating drums in a fire, um, we had uh, we had a guest. His name is Cat Krieger, and he's a, an indigenous elder here in Canada, and mm -hmm. uh, he educated me a little bit about um, the indigenous drum beat and how the drum beat is a memory created um, or uh, a, excuse me a memory communicated to the crowd to the listeners about the the beat of the heart uh excuse me the beat of the mother's heart while you're in the womb so cool. you're, you're remembering your your mother's heartbeat giving you life and going back to connection to food and to nature and the, the disconnect we we don't do that like we, we we don't gather around and uh and listen to a sacred drum beat but we do gather around listen to people play drums in a rock band And so mm -hmm. you, you said that you actually, you, you told me says, there, Metallica or Rush or U2 or whomever can fill a stadium and create yeah. an emotional, an emotional experience that politicians wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, and that brings me to, that brings me to what, why it's like, what is it that we're thirsting when we're, when we're in a stadium? Like I hate large crowds, but I love to watch large crowds in communion with the connection to the music. I love watching it for, it's fascinating for me to watch thousands of people listening to one thing and, and communicating at the same time, the same thing. Why, what is it? What is it? What's that connection? I don't know. I think like it's a, it's, it's the energy waves of the music. It's that is the connection. It's like put, it's like it's energy moving. It's emotion, energy in motion kind of, floating around and then it's like this is you connect with that and yeah that's it so this is what we what what we love and then it's the light too so if it's the light show that is the fire and it's like we we want to go there and we want to feel that connection that we have with the heart and like we do that like we still we go and we gather we make a fire we play some songs in in, in with a guitar 
Um, but we have been forgotten to doing it more off, more often and more conscious um, in a way. It, so maybe, <laughs> sorry to interrupt, but maybe those pyramid sites in Guatemala were set up by sound technicians. Yeah. Rock bands, early rock bands. <laughs> for sure, for I sure. Like, no, really, like there has been concerts that, that they have been doing there, like in the, for example, in the pyramids of Giza and stuff like that. And the acoustics are really amazing and impressive. So maybe they have to be something related with sound uh, for sure. Um, but I think like it's this place's value is like depending in the, in these sites, independently of the sound or whatever, it's like there are inlay lines that is like energy lines from the earth. And then they, you, you go there and you feel like it's places of value. So you feel your value more. So you feel yourself more, you enjoy yourself more. And this is happening in a lot of natural places. As I told you before, like you go to the ocean and then maybe not for all the people, but if you don't like the ocean, then you like the river. And it's like, wow, that's my place of value. And it's, it's really natural. So I think like we all have that and it's it's been difficult the last years like being in touch with that but it, it was like kind of wake up call like we need to really get in touch with the moth like we really need to get like that microbius into our system too like get healthy again because it's like it's the earth is healthy touching the earth is healthy working the earth is healthy maybe that's what it is maybe uh maybe the experience of music is what really brings what brings <laughs> people together uh, it, like it because it transcends it seems to transcend everything like it, there there's a, a there's an emotion that helps people feel connected and when you help people feel connected you can connect them to other things mm -hmm. to other messages um not to not to keep uh, harping on uh rock bands but there is one example that got me really emotional when i found out so in the 90s so i'm a little older than you but in the 90s it was a, a metallica song I think it was late nineties. Yeah. Um, uh, memory remains. And in this song, uh, there are two parts in the song, one in the middle, one right at the end, there was a voice that was not, uh, uh, did not come from the band, uh, from the band members, a kind of, um, uh, an old man's, um, uh, maybe digitized, exaggerated, um, uh, humming, but it was really catchy and I liked it. And you know, whatever, you know, I, I grow up and 20 years later, I'm listening to the song again, but this time I'm listening to, uh, I'm listening to it and watching it live concert in San Francisco or whatever. And then that humming starts and they pan to a woman in her seventies. Mm -hmm. What? That actually, that sounds like her. Is that her? So I look her up and she's a woman named Marianne Faithful. And uh, she was, uh, at one point, she was uh, Mick Jagger's girlfriend in the sixties and seventies. And then she became an addict. And then lost her, she lost her voice, laryng she got laryngitis, lost her voice, but then permanently scarred her voice because of the, the drugs that she was taking and so forth. And her, 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 the sound she makes is so unique and so emotionally deep. Going back to this concert that I was watching, when her part, so she's a 70-year-old woman, it's kind of a, a big physical presence on the stage looks nothing like the other band members. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't walking down the street. You wouldn't figure that these people would be congregating together. So they're very different. She mm. starts to sing or hum and the crowd goes bananas and they sing along with her and they won't let her stop. So they won't finish the song with her. They just keep going and the band members stop playing and they clap their hands and on the microphone, they ask her how she feels. She goes, this is wonderful. Thousands of people are humming with her. And it's got nothing to do with drums or guitars. Nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. But everybody in unison with this 70-year-old woman who's touched their lives. Oh. <laughs> so, I, so I, anyway, I, I'm bringing it up. I think I brought it up last time too a little bit. Um, but you telling me that I didn't know that you were a, music, a, a musician. So when you brought this up and then you mentioned Metallica. I, uh, I want to be <laughs> I want to be a musician. Well, you uh, I think like, yeah, like I, I don't I don't like that concept of what you are like. I think like we are all like uh, this is why I say like we are all need to make art and without like thinking about like, yeah, like if I'm going to play a guitar just for enjoying myself, like it's cool. Like, you don't need to be like Metallica. It's, 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 it's really nice. And it's the same, like if you want to do painting or if you want to do films or if you want to do stuff, like I think like in that, that, that creates like a, 
I, I don't know, you become more sensible and then you could share some, some more stuff, like some maybe difficult concepts or, or difficult ideas like the ancient wisdom from the indigenous communities, like mm -hmm. that you could translate it in a different way, but in a beautiful way through art, like maybe through a song, through like imagine hearing a spiritual leader like, like, like that, making a ritual song or uh, singing a, a ritual song and then you put that for thousand hundred people, like that the energy is going to be there and it's going to be awesome. So if you do it into a film and there is like all these people is connected into the cinemas, like in this box, like focus it into this screen, like <laughs> receiving this electromagnetic impulse and pulsations is like, you could put a lot of messages there into that people. That they are hearing a song, they are seeing a text, they are watching a scene that maybe they are seeing something that they are seeing stuff that they don't see. Well, you said it well, I think, uh, you know, maybe 20 minutes ago or so, you said film is a great uh, summatory. You said, you said summatory? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, of all <laughs> art, of all art. And it, it, that's one thing, you know, everybody has a Netflix account nowadays or Amazon Prime or whatever. And we all sit on our sofas or in an airplane and watch movies. But it, you, you have a very strong point about sharing sharing in the same electrical impulses uh, and electrical energy when you are watching something together that sums up uh, sums up messages like you're trying to do yeah uh, i think like it, that's if if you put that into inspire and action it's like it's really cool like we we did this message with uh it's a 10 minute message with an indigenous elder from from colombia and he talked about some stuff about the root of the climate crisis and some kind of hidden roots that they believe. And it's like, with that, we could be able to plant thousands of trees. So it's like, wow, it, it was really amazing. Like we put some video, then the people get touched, then the people donate that we could plant the trees. And so it's like, it's, it's kind of, it's inspiring, but it's like, he's giving the option to take action too. So that that's a lot of, of what I believe that with art is really incredible, not just to give you the feeling like, okay, I need to change something, but let's change it together. Like we could do, go beyond and do something more than just delivering the message. Before, before you die, what's your dream film to make? My dream film to make, wow. Like, I don't know. I, I really don't know because it's like I started in, into this project, like in, in the Sierra project, and there is a lot of stories there, like a lot. So every time that I go there, like the ancient stories that they have is like everyone is a, is a movie. But making a movie is like, it's kind of miracle. It's like, it's really, really expensive. The ideas is like, it's really, like and making a documentary is more, more difficult too, in a way, like, you are not in control of nothing. Uh, but then I'm thinking like, for example, fiction is a really good way to say truths with lies, kind of. Kind of art has that, that power. Like you could create a film that is like, it's a fiction film with a lot of truth in it, but tell it by lies. That is a, it's, it's something made up, right? So it's like, I control this scene. So um, yeah, you don't you don't mean lying. You mean lies, meaning something that doesn't exist to create the 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 what the truth is. Sure. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Creating words, characters, and stuff like. So that's what you want to you want to do. You want to do a, a fiction film. Uh, sometimes I believe that yeah, that would be awesome to make. Like for example, into some story that I always hear that is like is really that for me that is is really powerful, visually powerful, is that the indigenous in the conquest they knew before the conquest arrived, so they already knew that someone was coming, and they already have been in contact actually with people from the north. Uh, that's like documented too. Um, and then it's like they knew and then they they kind of they hide the 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 the, the yeah like the most valuable things but they hide it in places so they say that one day they were going to come out again and that they were, we were going to remember and that has a lot to do with that all these ancient sites are made by stone and that there you find it in particular places like in Indonesia, the same as Mexico, or in Egypt, the same as Mexico, related with the stars and stuff. Mm -hmm. So 
I found that 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 would be a really cool story to tell into a film in a fiction film that maybe how it was the conquest, but, but seen in the other way, like how it was happening there before. Where were that? Um, yeah, who were these? Who were these really these people? Because it's like, for example, I enter into history in my school, and the first chapter is like the Spanish arrive or the European conquest arrive. And then you don't know your history. So it's like, mm -hmm. uh, um, I would say that that would be really cool to tell that story. Uh, that's a film that I would love to do. But yeah, like maybe when I'm older. <laughs> are, are you afraid of dying? No, not really. Not really. No, it's okay. Like when time comes, like something we something better or something worse so it's like the events what, what do you what do you believe uh happens occurs exists after you die your body dies um i think like we never dies no, nothing dies never like like energy is infinite so like we are always transmuting into something else and maybe that part of consciousness that well i will say that it's consciousness that is myself and my being and my soul wherever like goes into these different dimensions that we have already here and sometimes we experience it um so maybe it's going to other realm and then the body is dissolved into something new, uh, changing energy. But I don't know. I don't think too much like something. It's something that I think and I say like, okay, I found the piece in that answer for me. <laughs> uh, and yeah. You're, you're just doing art. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and whatever comes, it comes. Like, but I have that feeling that, yeah. So so many cool things could happen. You become some star or you become like whatever. But I think that like you, you didn't die like, or we didn't die. Like we just go evolve or whatever. Last question. What, uh, what's greatness to you? What does it mean for you? Greatness. Uh, that's greatness. Yeah, uh, sometimes I think like greatness is like for me it's, it's in the small things. I don't know why, but it's like if, for example, a seed for me is like it's greatness. It's like something really small that contains something so great and so big, and the whole potential of it. So it's kind of what you don't see, but maybe it's encoding something. Ma, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, like oh, maybe harmony in so many processes too is greatness. Maybe it's obvious to the uh, to the listener. It's obvious to me. Um, seems what guides you. Uh, this is just my last comment. I, I don't. I agree or disagree. <laughs> this is my my impression. What guides you is um, the energy you feel about what you do. Just seems to me. It seems to me that's how you um, that's how you live your life. And uh, um, going back to music and art, um, I feel that if you didn't have music or art, um, you wouldn't exist. Mm. Yeah, maybe not. No, but maybe I would be a farmer without music. Ah, oh. mm. Yeah, but you would be living probably in a place that will give you sound. A farm, yeah, like with the sound with the animals, like the birds. <laughs> <and being. laughs> or create your own band with the animals. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been fun. It's been fun, Santiago. Thank you. Thank you for your time. No, cool, man. I think like, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to have these conversations with you. Like, It's always been a pleasure uh, talking about so many things. And I hope that, yeah, like some like nice uh, words were put it out today i think so i think so I, it was well worth the time for sure and well worth the wait six months of it or something <laughs> thank you yeah, finally good uh good luck and i uh, uh, not good luck you don't need luck uh you just need to keep doing what you're doing but uh maybe maybe one day i can i can hear about the 
the film that you're going to make your dream film yeah no for sure and then like like in the website like the in the next six months we are going to be releasing more uh, videos about like uh, messages from the communities talking with the spiritual elders for example what is the importance of trees what is the importance of food the importance of seeds and then talking with them you start kind of finding more connections and yeah like in understanding more deeper concepts that maybe we didn't think about before and that's really nice because it's kind of it gives you like a fuel for other ideas that you are doing in your fields that maybe yeah. could develop it more so that's that's really nice i think like if you we give the space to that ancient wisdom to thrive right now and to hear that uh, because it's going to help us a lot and that's what we want to do with the project so um and you could subscribe into the newsletter we are sending a lot of storytelling there and in the social media is the same so we are posting the 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 films and hopefully like we could like when the time is ready like the more bigger piece is gonna get out that we are working to that um and hopefully goes into a big platform that we could spread the word really nice and the people could connect with that so like i i think it's it's yeah, we are going there, but it's lovely. So at the same time, we are sewing, and that's the idea. Like, that's how sewing. seed grows. Seed grows yeah, slowly. exactly. Exactly. Like, this is the most important process. Like, we we you didn't have the the fruits the next day of your planting. So it's like going with the process of nature. Is like going with the seed and growing, enjoying the process, and then uh, yeah, enjoying the forest too. We'll we'll put all that information in the show notes as well, so that cool. the listeners, whenever they listen to this, they can uh, they can see for themselves to the the wonderful work that you guys are doing. Cool. Thanks Bye. again, Santiago. Thank you, Bye. brother. Thank you. Thank you Gracias. very much. Bye. Hey, it's Enrico Colantoni here, actor, director, and dedicated napper. Like what you heard today? There's more to come. Make sure to subscribe to Behind Greatness and learn about our live events at inspirenorth.com. You'll also find links to our social media right on our website, so be sure to give us a like and follow. Until next time, stay inspired.